Hello and welcome. It is another edition of Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. Tonight's episode promises to be as insightful and inspiring as always as we continue to x-ray activities and transformations in the country's agricultural sector. This time, we talk about horticulture. When we talk about agriculture, the mind is quickly occupied by grains like rice and cowpea, root crops like yam and cassava, tuber crops like potatoes and carrots and so on. Very seldom is horticulture mentioned, yet we see and eat the amazing fruits and vegetables coming out of farms across Nigeria, from mangoes, pawpaw, pineapple and guava, to pepper, tomato, okra, melon and amaranthus. The list is endless. This episode, therefore, takes a look at that crucial aspect of agriculture in a bid to assess its potential and how the nation can move from where it is to where it should be. We'll take a short break at this time, and when we come back, we'll see a lineup from events in the diary of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Stay with us. In our diary tonight, Permanent Secretary urges stakeholders for improved cat pea performance. IAR pushes for better Roselle variant. And Cross River keys into presidential agenda on rice with seedlings factory. Details coming up. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Ernest Omahihe has urged stakeholders and players in the agricultural sector to push for better indices in the implementation of the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program, CADP, which Nigeria is a part of as a member state within the African Union. Omahihe gave the charge during the National Dialogue on the Nigeria Agriculture Sector Performance Review at the AU Biennial Review Exercise and validation of the 2019 Agricultural Joint Sector Review Report held in Abuja recently. The Permanent Secretary spoke through a representative. He said performance reports for 2017 and 2019 showed that Nigeria performed below the benchmark. He noted that Nigeria had a score of 5.18 out of 10, far lower than the 6.6 .6 benchmark given by the Africa Union. He added that although 90% of all African countries do not show promise of attaining the target, much work is required to boost the country's performance to get within the fringe. This platform was designed to accord us the opportunity to identify data gaps and possible sources for the next biennial review process as well as pinpoint the areas for the preparation of policy brief for the articulation of projects and programs towards enhancing the process of attaining the party commitment and national goal of the country. Also present at the event were representatives of crucial stakeholders including CADP, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, ECOWAS, the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics, and the Central Bank of Nigeria. The Institute for Agricultural Research, IAR Zaria, has embarked on the production of better Roselle variants in a bid to change the current dynamics in the market. This follows the lifting of the ban on Roselle importation from Nigeria by big buyers like Mexico and other nations. Speaking on the development, acting program leader for Atemisia, vegetable and horticultural crops, Dr. Rekia Abdul Malik, observed that Roselle, locally known as Zobo, is an important plant for confectionery and medicine in the country. She said the institute has dedicated about 1.84 hectares to cultivate Roselle in order to produce healthier, more concentrated and bigger calyx, the reddish purple flower-like part used for confectionery. 
in 2017 there was a ban in Nigeria to export this crop due to some phytosanitary issues though recently I have information it's been lifted and uh, I think we are kicking up again so we have this uh, trial here at the Institute for calyx production the calyx is the roselle part which is the part which is the zobo part we actually use for the tea we use for confectionery drinks for jellies so it has so many uses medicinal health benefit it's uh, fortified with antioxidants vitamin c so it's good for liver functioning it uh, has antidepressant properties anti-aging properties for people down to look young also the leaves can be used for laxative um, uh, mothers she added that the benefits and popularity of the roselle locally known as zobo in the country made it necessary for the institute to examine the crop with plans to provide better seeds for farmers in the future she said the move will also help take out adulterated products in the market due to poor seeds and cultivation practices Before the ban, Nigeria made $35 million in Roselle exports to Mexico in 2017 alone. The IAR, which has a product development unit, is hoping that this new effort of government will once again put the country on the map, as well as develop the crop along the value chain. The federal government's policy on rice has received a boost with the establishment of a seedlings factory by the Cross River State Government. These stakeholders say gives impetus to the drive by the Buhari-led administration to make the country self-sufficient in rice. In an interview at the state capital, Calabar, Commissioner for Agriculture and Natural Resources, Untufam Okun Unguna, said that as Nigeria wishes to boost agriculture, especially in the area of rice, Cross River State is working to be at the forefront of that drive. In Cross River State, this is the only state in the country that you have a, a, a rice seed and seedling processing, a rice seed and seedling plant in Cross River State that is located in the Industrial Park. Before now, farmers, rice farmers, were depending on the lookout method of broadcasting rice seeds that were not non-viable seeds so at even the, at the point of even cultivation the farmers were already losing money so we have moved from the from planting seeds to seedlings because with seedlings you have over 99 percent viability and these seedlings are are specially grafted modified to suit the environment in nigeria not only in cross river state the seedling factory is there the entire Nigeria now as a country is depending on cross river seed alone for the supply of rice seedlings across the country. The move endorsed by the federal government had President Muhammad Buhari commissioned the facility in 2018. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development has also shown support and commendations since the factory kicked off more than a year ago, urging other states to take a cue. Oranges, mangoes, cashew, coconut, bananas, plantains and some vegetables are some of the crops within the horticultural subsector of agriculture. These are everyday fruits that we eat for required nourishment and vitamins. Melon is also a major delicacy in Nigeria known as egusi, and so is okra and several other leafy vegetables used for soups and salads. But is horticulture getting the amount of attention it needs? How well is Nigeria doing as far as horticulture is concerned? What are the untapped potentials and the way forward? These are questions we'll attempt to answer in our next segment, Partnership for Development. Please stay with us.
fruits like oranges are popular for their sweetness and health benefits, whether it is the provision of vitamin C and other minerals or antioxidant properties, there's a lot to gain from fruits, along with some crops and vegetables. Fruits cultivation makes up horticulture. Global production of fruits currently stands at 883 million tons. As at 2017, China was the world's largest producer of fruits with 154 million tons, followed by India, Brazil, and the USA. When added to vegetables, that figure rises to more than 1.5 billion tons annually. For China, fruit crops make up the major cash crops for farmers after cotton and tobacco, employing more than 13.8 million people in the country. Apart from temperate fruits like apples, grapes and peach, which are not supported by Nigerian climate, the country produces much of the fruits she consumes. The country's fruit industry alone is worth between 10 and 15 billion dollars. While the potential is huge, there is an explanation why many Nigerians cannot go into big-time horticulture. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, himself a horticulturist, explained that horticulture is a business for long-term investors. Now 70% of my farming activities is in the area of horticulture. It is a long-term venture because for mangoes and oranges to reach their optimum, it will take them about 12 years to 13 years. But the good thing about horticulture, as they grow and give you more revenue, your operation cost comes down. For example, mango, after three, four years, you don't need to do anything. It will just give you new bearing fruits. Another factor may also be the expanse of land required to do big commercial horticulture. Although modern practices like hydroponics are looking to eliminate the need for so much space. As the minister adds, once you're sucked into the industry, you fall in love with it because it is mostly a lifelong source of revenue. A mango is seasonal. So guava also can, 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 is not seasonal. It, it, it grows virtually once it is watered. Uh, and Indian lemon and the moringo. And now I have gone into the production of pawpaw. Uh, and uh, I am also going to into the production of cashew nuts. It's a very huge opportunity for hot culture in this country. The market is enormous. The prospect of exporting is also very high and probably very lucrative. So I am focusing on this. Although there are not many orchards and plantations in the country, we located some of them. Rayfield Farms in Jiguada, Nesara State is where one of such operators is thriving in the horticulture business. Although banana is a fruit and plantain regarded as a crop, but the similarities between the two are such that one can hardly tell the difference of one tree from the other. For both plants, water is a crucial factor. Rayfield Farms has 12,000 banana and plantain trees to worry about. Most banana and plantain plantations are often located in areas with lots of water in the soil to enable the roots tap from. The brown leaves here tell a different story and this farmer is fighting to keep the trees alive for productivity. Thankfully, many of them are picking up and already fruiting. Just adjacent to plantation, an expansion is in progress with additional trees being planted. Again, water is key. The solution for Rayfield Farms would be the provision of a nearby dam 
on large-scale reservoirs for automated irrigation. This will also reduce cost of production by almost 50%. At the moment, the farm is making efforts through the construction of five reservoirs across the farms to provide 300,000 liters of water for its plantations and orchards. Overhead tanks and water pumping facilities are other necessities here. Next to fruits are vegetables. As the CEO, retired Major General John Davis, says, there's not much you can do without water, but a nearby stream provides huge opportunity. Well, the way out is, uh, this can be dammed, but if you look at the size of this river, it is not a project that can be undertaken by a farmer and one, one person alone. So if government can intervene, or we have investors that can agree to uh, dam this river, and then we can do more than just vegetables in the dry season. We can really farm all year round, different crops. So water is a big challenge here. This farm also has interests in coconut, sarsop, and other fruits. Later at night, we meet up with General Davis and his wife at a part of his compound he carved out as a nursery. This sarsop and coconut have to be nursed for months before they are transplanted in the open field. In Kaduna, another farm, Niger First Limited, has several hectares dedicated to different fruits. When we visited this cashew farm two months ago, it showed signs of good growth. For them, there is a plan to tap into the value chain in the future. We intend to actually um, to start processing our own juice ourselves and then you can have the cashew nuts as well which are very very large market if I may say as well so processing at the end of the day. But that would take at least another two years to begin. For now this plant's totaling 2,000 must be properly nurtured. Our recent visit revealed just how well the trees are faring. Watering and pest control are two major activities here. Hello? Passion fruit, a fruit not very common in the country except among fruit juice makers, is another product here. The mango trees at Niger First, several thousands are between 15 and 20 years old. Although still yielding, a succession plan is already in place. On this 5 hectare land, 500 stems have been transplanted following the global standard of between 6 to 8 meters in spacing requirement. But that is not all. This farmer is experimenting on a different variety known as the Tommy Mango. Um, we, we got the stems um, from the nursery, you know, um, build it to, uh, um, we grew it to the stem level and then we transplant or we marry basically. Um, it's like a hybrid thing now with the old mangoes that we have so that we get a, a good value. So far, so good. Some have started yielding, as you can see, and some we will still have to transplant again. Watering is done here at least once every week, but it's not just watering. The workers ensure the root bed is flooded so that the soil can hold as much water as possible. There is also a sugarcane plantation on four hectares of land. Again, this is another plant that needs lots of water. Irrigation beds and pathways are manually created to ensure that sufficient water gets to every plant and as much water is retained until the next time watering is done. Unlike his counterpart in Nasarawa, Niger First has a dam beside it and 
it is taking immense advantage of it. On a broader scope, fruits and vegetables can provide the following benefits for the country. Food security and nutrition, improved income and better rural economies, economic opportunities, pharmaceutical properties, reduction of child and maternal mortality due to improved nutrition and improved immune system to combat illnesses and diseases. So, whether it's orange, mango, banana, passion fruits, cashew, coconut or any other fruit, there is a ready market waiting to buy. From the Nigerian who just wants to make fruit salad or serve juice from an orange to the fruit drink production companies scattered all across the nation, horticulture is certainly one business you can't go wrong with. In subsequent editions, we'll do well to capture other parts of the country, especially the rainforest regions, to see how horticulture is being harnessed by farmers there. We'll also reveal the unique role of the Nigerian Institute for Horticultural Research, NIHOT, in the development of horticulture in the country. But one thing is certain, you too can start small and benefit from the value chain. Let us now take words from a farmer on how he is partnering with government to revive cotton propagation in the country. We are farmers. We inherited farming from our parents. Just like this cotton farming which we abandoned in the past, we are grateful that the current administration is working to revive cotton farming in the country. They introduced the Anko Borrowers program for cotton farmers like me. We have been getting loans to do our farming, but the only problem is that it usually comes late sometimes. Like this one we are harvesting now, the loan came towards the end of the rainy season, but we thank God for the support we are getting from the government, and we are grateful that we were able to get good yield. Cotton is a soft, fluffy staple fiber that grows in a ball or protective case around the seeds of the cotton plant. Cotton is majorly used in making numerous textile products such as terry cloth for highly absorbent towels and robes, denim for blue jeans, bed sheets, socks and underwear. Other uses include fishing nets, coffee filters, tents, among others. Global production of cotton is estimated at 25 million tons annually, accounting for 2.5% of the world's arable land. According to data from 2018, the largest producers of cotton are India and China, with annual production of about 6.4 million tons and 5.9 million tons respectively. In 2017, Nigeria was the 6th largest cotton producing country in Africa and 22nd biggest producer in the world with an estimated 291,207 metric tons that year. This is a far cry from what the nation recorded in 2010 when it produced 602,000 metric tons of cotton. Cotton production in the country has dropped significantly especially following the death in its once buoyant textile industry and a leaning towards importation. The current top cotton producing states in Nigeria are Kano, Kaduna, Katsina, Ondo, Ogun, Kebi and Zamfara states, among others. It has been an interesting journey and a fruitful one, I'm sure. Horticulture already provides jobs and livelihoods for millions of people across the country, and we can do much more with investments in processing and confectionery. But that's how far we can go tonight on this episode of Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. 
Let's meet again same time next week for another packed edition. Remember to protect yourself and your loved ones from COVID-19. Follow the guidelines and stay safe. Bye for now.